Do we just passively observe the social world? Obviously not. The way we perceive the social world is motivated by a need to predict and control our social environment. We want to be able to work out why people behave the way they do so that we can maximise the chance that something good will happen to us and minimise the chance that something bad will happen to us. To understand the behaviour of others, and ourselves actually, we try to infer the cause of the behaviour. This process is called attribution. According to Haider, we try to attribute a behaviour to a cause that is either external or internal to the actor. An external cause could be a stimuli that was in the environment. Haider called these situational factors. We learn the sorts of behaviours that most people perform in different situations. Basically, we develop schemas associated with situations. When a person's behaviour is different from what is expected in our schema, we can make what is called an internal attribution. An internal cause would be one that is related to a person's personality characteristics, or in Heider's terms, dispositional factors. Now, Heider was thinking about how we attribute causes for single behaviours that we observe. It's quite common that we get to see a person behave more than once, however, especially our work colleagues, friends and family. In this instance, we have more information than just our schema associated with the context that the behaviour is performed in. Kelly's covariation model describes the sorts of additional information that we have when observing multiple behaviours, and how we can use that information to make different types of attributions. The idea that Kelly proposed was that we attribute a behaviour to the cause with which it covaries over time. This is called the covariation principle. To help us do this, Kelly thought that we paid attention to three particular types of information. The first of these is consensus information, which is whether other people perform the same behaviour or not. The second type of information is distinctiveness information, and this is whether the behaviour is only performed towards this particular target or person, or whether it is performed towards other targets as well. The final type of information that helps us make an attribution according to this model is consistency information, which is whether the behaviour is performed all the time or not. So, the three types of attributions that we could make using this information are a person attribution, a target attribution, and a situational attribution. A person attribution is when we attribute the cause of the behaviour to the person performing the behaviour. We would make this attribution when there's information about a low level of consensus in performing the behaviour. This person performs the behaviour, but not other people. We can make a target attribution when there's information that the behaviour is highly distinctive. That is, we would say that the person who is the target or the recipient of the behaviour is the cause when the behaviour is enacted towards this target, but not other targets. Finally, we could make a situational attribution when that behaviour is due to something in the context or situation when there's low consistency in performing the behaviour. This means that the behaviour is performed in some contexts or situations but not others. So you can see that when something co-varies with the behaviour, either the person performing the behaviour, the target or the recipient of the behaviour, or the situation that the behaviour is performed in, we see that thing as the cause of the behaviour. So let's look at an example that makes this a bit more concrete. 